Mr. President, great to see you. Thank you very much, John. You literally just finished the press conference with President Putin moments ago. Uh, a lot came up. You were very strong at the end of that press conference. You said, where are the servers? What about what Peter Strzok said? Where are the 33,000 emails? And there was this mystery answer that I think surprised a lot of people by the president of Russia as it relates to the Mueller investigation. That's right. Well, first of all, he said there was no collusion whatsoever. Uh, I guess uh, he said as strongly as you can say it, they have no information on Trump. It was an interesting statement, too. You know, many years ago when I was there, what was it, 13, 14, a long time ago, uh, he said there were many, many business people there. In all fairness, I was a very successful businessman, but I was one of a lot of people. And uh, one thing you know, if they had it, it would have been out. He and said it was so nonsense. Th he said it's nonsense, is right. And he uh, also said there's absolutely no collusion, which you know, and everybody that watches your show knows. And I think most of the country knows, and Tucker standing right over there definitely knows, because he gets it. He's one of the people that get it. But I'll tell you that uh, I thought it was a really amazing time. Not about that. I think it's a shame. We're talking about nuclear proliferation. We're talking about Syria and humanitarian aid. We're talking about all of these different things, and we get questions on the witch hunt. And I don't think the people out in the, in the country buy it, but the reporters like to give it a shot. I thought that President Putin was very, very strong. Let's talk about how the day went. You actually used the term four hours ago that changed, right. talking about the relationship. Right. Was it that quickly and that well, profound? We had a very long meeting. And it was a good meeting. We discussed so many different things, including nuclear, including uh, war and peace, including uh, economic, uh, Syria, Ukraine. We discussed many, many things. And uh, at the end of a long period of time, I mean, it was really a long, it was just the two of us and interpreters. And at the end of this meeting, I think we really came to a lot of good conclusions, a really good conclusion for Israel something very strong. He's a, he's a believer in Israel. He's a fan of Bibi and uh, really helping him a lot and will help him a lot, which is good for all of us. Let's talk about specifics that you went over as it relates to both Syria, which he has been a supporter of the Assad regime, and, of course, Iran, which is the number one state sponsor right. of terror, fomenting proxy wars. Right. Well, I think in Syria we're getting very close. Uh, I think it's becoming a humanitarian situation, and a lot of people are going to move back to Syria from Turkey and from Jordan and from different places. They're going to move back, less so from Europe, but uh, they will be moving back from lots of different places. So I really think we're not very far apart on Syria. I do think that on... Iran, he probably would have liked to keep the deal in place because that's good for Russia. You know, they do business with it's good for a lot of the countries that do business with Iran, but it's not good for this country and it's ultimately not good for the world. And if you look at what's happening, Iran is falling apart. They have riots in all their cities. The inflation is rampant and going through the roof. And not that you want to hurt anybody, but that regime, we would let the people know that we are behind them 100 percent. But they're having big protests all over the country, probably as big as they've ever had before. And that all happened since I terminated that deal. So we'll see. You know, they can were talking partner, about... Can you partner with Russia to perhaps stop the fomenting of terror, stop the proxy wars? Did, was that discussed? Well, it was. And I think that would be a great thing if we could do it. Then you have some people that say, oh, you'd have to do, you know, get involved with Russia. But if we can stop killing all over the place, or terrorism. We discussed radical Islamic terror at great length, because they have the problem, too. Uh, we discussed ISIS, and as you know, we've pretty much eradicated ISIS in the Middle East, and we've done a very strong job. He acknowledged that. But we discussed ISIS and the threat of ISIS, and basically the threat of terrorism. Yeah. Let me go to the issue of nuclear proliferation. 2021, the START Treaty would need to be yeah. uh, extended, and also the INF as it relates to, and he did bring up the idea of missile defense. Right. Um, were those issues discussed, and did you make any progress? Well, I think we're at the very beginning, it's a very important issues. 
To me, the most important issue is uh, the nuclear issue, because I know President Obama said global warming is our biggest problem, and I would say that, no, it's nuclear warming is our biggest problem by a factor of about 5 million. Uh, the, the nuclear problem, we have to make sure, we have to be very careful. And, you know, if you look at Russia and the United States, that's 90 percent of the nuclear weapons. Two and nuclear if we powers. start doing something and working on other countries, and he also said he wants to be very helpful with North Korea. We're doing well with North Korea. We have time. Um, there's no rush. You know, it's been going on for many years. But we're doing very well. As you know, we got our hostages back. There's been no testing. There's been no nuclear uh, explosions, which we would know in about, uh, no you know, immediately. Fire. There's been no rockets going over Japan, no missiles going over Japan. And that's now been nine months, and the relationship is very good. You saw the nice letter he wrote. And so I think uh, a lot of good things are happening. But President Putin is very much into uh, making that all happen. A lot of people in the lead up to this, obviously, you met with our NATO allies. Yes. And America pays 70 cents of every dollar, and a lot of people have not lived up to their commitment as it relates to that. And also, interestingly, because a big part of NATO's mission is to prevent any hostility from Russia. And yet Angela Merkel is willing to put import billions of dollars worth of their energy up to 70 percent, which I would argue would make them vulnerable. And uh, she's paying Russia billions of dollars. Now, that's her choice. I mean, if she's going to do it, but it's a little tough when you're in NATO and you do that. Uh, I will say that I was amazed at the media because, honestly, I was there for a day and a half, and it started right when I got there. And I was very respectful, but I told people it's unfair. The United States could be paying for 91 percent, okay? Could be. So the minimum is 70 percent, but it's probably 91. So we're paying for 91 percent of the cost of keeping Europe safe. On top of that, the European Union takes total advantage of us with tariffs and with trade barriers. But they kill us on trade. We lost $151 billion last year. So they beat us on trade, and we defend them for essentially nothing. And I said, it's not going to be that way anymore. You got to pay up. You got to pay more. The Secretary General gave you the credit. And he gave me all of the credit. For last, last year, there was $44 billion more, only because more additional. And he said it was only because of President Trump. So I figured I'd wake up the next day and read these wonderful stories. And, and by the way, I got Did a long really grade. Did you believe that the media would do that? I actually thought, finally, I'm going to have a great story. <laughs> okay, foreign relations. I'm yeah. going to have a great story. And instead of saying that I raised 44 billion, not million, 44 billion last year for NATO, I raised, it could be over $100 billion this year. And into the future, they said that I treated the heads of other nations rough. They, and, and I didn't. I actually have great relationships with them.